Hello world! In this episode of the Arm Care Art Historian series, I want to combine me sitting here and talking about art with the real art experience. Consider it as going to the museum in parallel to surfing the internet or playing video games or whatever that you do on the internet. Because this museum is online. No worries, I do not suggest you taking the virtual tour to the Uffizi Gallery or get stuck with the Google Arts and Culture projects. Although, this is not the worst way of spending your time. And you know what's really great about this online museum? Is that you are a curator. And as the title of this video clearly states, I'm going to talk about internet art. So you can enjoy authentic artworks in the place where it belongs. But before you start building your own museum, let's figure out what it all means. So what is internet art? On the surface, it's rather simple. Internet art is art based on internet or made with available internet technologies. Note that we have witnessed one of the fastest appropriation of medium by the artists. Internet as a concept appeared in the early 60s of the last century and intermingled in our daily life in a short 20 years. A decade later, visual artists got around to the internet not just as an instrument of communication and one's online presence, they discovered infinite possibilities of the artistic expression. The beauty of the internet is that it allows interconnected creation, sharing and consumption of its products. Artists find this particular idea the most important. Take for instance Ole Lyalina from Russia, who was standing at the avant-garde of this art movement. In 1996, she created a project My Boyfriend Came Back From The War. It is a narrative website that reveals the dialogue between two fictional characters. No matter which replies you choose, the whole conversation doesn't work out well. Part of this failure is our own choice, and part is deliberately irrational but still possible answers that artists encoded in it. My boyfriend came back from the war, has no hidden political message or pacifistic purpose as it would be expected in the 90s of the 20th century during the active warfare in the Middle East, Eastern Europe, Caucasus and a number of civil wars in Africa. We have to try to look at it separately from the context. As a lexical item, as a phrase, my boyfriend came back from the war, sounds like a poetry because it's, it has its own rhythm. And this is what actually Ole Lyalina meant. I always wanted to complete it as a poem, but the next lines never came. You might think there is something wrong with my internet connection since some images apply quite slow. But no, everything's fine. Olya intentionally slowed down the loading time to give you this sense of the web 1.0. However, it is not just a cute throwback to the inception of the internet. As she commands, I wanted to make something that people would spend time with and look at in the browser. This was also possible back then because the connection was much slower. In some artworks, however, it is hard to find even a slight reference to the storytelling. In 1995, a group of two artists, Jody, which is an abbreviation of their names, Johan Heemskeg from the Netherlands and Dirk Passmans from Belgium, launched their website www.jody.org. Boundless labyrinth of the web pages linked to each other create billions of different paths and enhance billions of experiences. It is, as in the previous example, up to you where it will lead you. Honestly, I was very surprised to find a lot of videos on YouTube of people surfing the Jody website under the title The Scariest Website in the World or something like Creepy Review of the Jody Website. Because it is not scary, no mysterious, no dangerous. It is pure meditation, searching one's track and constantly asking yourself, what do I see? Try it yourself and I'm sure you'll find something interesting. For example, I found a digital ring. Depending on where and how fast I click these little digital drops, the speed and intensity change respectively. Of course, artists do not limit themselves by building websites only. One of the absolute favorites is making a bot. And hey, how about the bot that randomly buys stuff on Amazon? This idea occurred to the American internet artist Darius Kazami. And this was a, an algorithm that I gave a $50 Amazon gift card to once a month. Uh, and it would buy me stuff at random on Amazon and ship it directly to me, and then I'd find out what it sent me. Sometimes I'd get a book. 
The result of the online shopping, Darius posted every month on his Tumblr blog with a photo of the object he received, a short description of what it is, and also his reflection on the order. If you think it's a completely stupid idea, think about it once again while ordering something on the internet or even buying something offline. In a way, his artwork criticizes our relationship with capitalism, in which nothing actually has changed. We still tend to buy some useless stuff at any point in our life. Darius just made this point random and hand over responsibility to the algorithm. As a continuation of this idea, or maybe even as a mock, Zurich and London-based group of contemporary artists exclamation mark median group Bitnik built another shopping bot that is called Random Darknet Shopper. The same idea with a slight difference. This bot has an equivalent of $100 in bitcoins in its disposal and should place orders in so-called darknet. As a result, artists received fake brand clothes, different types of drugs, forged papers and evil email addresses. Targeting another market, artists unveiled the bitter truth of the demand for forgery and fraud permanent existence of the other side of the coin. The main similarity of many existing bots is that they perform human activities. But where there is a bot behaving like a human, there is a human behaving like a bot. Jacob Akila and Thomas Bender are creators of two controversial accounts that you've probably never heard of. Nothing wrong with that, though. Jacob Bakila took over the existing Twitter account slash bot called Horse Ebook in 2011. At that point, the bot has posted thousands of tweets featuring the name of the book and the link to the eponymous website, where this book can be bought. Occasionally, bot didn't work quite well, that is why titles are broke sometimes, or not logically finished, or not titles at all. Anyways, Jacob set up a goal to act just like a bot, which entails posting random book titles or book descriptions in a random time. In his interview with Vice, he says, What's interesting is that spam bots on Twitter don't want to appear automated. To be more convincing, they want to appear like humans. So it's machines impersonating human biorhythmic schedules. What I did was impersonate a machine's impersonation of a human. It wouldn't be easier to do it every hour on the hour, but it had to be in a simulation of what a machine imagines our schedules are. In the meantime, his crime partner Thomas Bender launched a YouTube channel, The Pronunciation Book, where he regularly posted how to say some words that people sometimes are struggling to pronounce. Lamborghini. Lamborghini. And some words. English words. Just for fun. The culmination of Bath project was reached on September 24, 2013, when Horse eBooks tweets the link to the pronunciation book video on how to pronounce Horse eBooks. The next tweet is a telephone number that connected curious callers to Jacob and Thomas straight ahead, sitting in a gallery and answering the calls with the prepared messages. The whole installation, or I would even say a protracted performance, is called Bravo Spam, which studies us, human of the new era, interacting with bots as with humans and with humans as with bots. In the previous 8 minutes 40 seconds, I managed to tell you a very brief history behind only 6 internet-based artworks, but there are thousands out there waiting for your attention. Oh, I know, you're probably asking yourself, where can I find internet art? On the internet, of course. I would recommend going to the websites of the worldwide renowned festivals of digital art such as German Transmediale, for instance. On their website, also available in German, go to the menu, participants, and discover all the artists of this year. Another example is the Brazilian International Electronic Language Festival. On their homepage, they divided all the artists by the categories. Go to the WebGL section and enjoy exquisite examples of internet graphics. Their website, obviously, has also a Portuguese version. Critical writings, together with the artworks presentations, can be also found on the website of the Institute of the Network Cultures, the part of the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences. Researchers and historians can be also interested in the extensive database of internet art as an offshoot of digital art, which is collected at digitalartarchive.at. I copied all the links in the description just for your convenience, but of course you can always begin your own search with Google and Wikipedia.
wait a minute. You still look a little bit confused about internet art. You're not even sure whether it's art at all? That's a good question. Is it art at all? In my humble opinion, the answer is yes. It is art because it incorporates the instrument, aforementioned internet, with the original idea and authentic message. It changes the perspective from which we see usual things such as browser page or social networks. And if you look at this in the historical context, you'll realize that this is what artists actually always do. They experiment with reality and question what's taken for granted. Let's face it, it's too late to doubt its genuine existence. The real problem comes from within the art world. Although a considerable amount of books and articles were written to praise and criticize internet art, galleries and museums are not completely confident with presentation and distribution of it. Self-evidently, all techniques of exhibiting cannot be used with new medium, especially when this new medium is meant to be spread worldwide. And this is another reason why you should experience by yourself. It differs from the art world and it differs from the online real. But apart from being just super unique, it also challenges our way to use the internet. Internet artists are not trying to be liked by you, nor are they trying to sell you something by putting buttons and links in the right position. They make you think, they make you go through the whole spectrum of feelings, and they make you reflect on how you have just experienced something very familiar, but drastically new. So if you guys follow my advice and clicked on a couple of links that I shared with you, or if you're going to do so, I'll be happy to know what you think about it and how was your experience with internet art. And until then, goodbye and I hope I'll see you next time somewhere where the art is.